Rain caused chaos, Ferrari bottling another win, and why Perez's victory might not be a good thing for Red Bull. We're talking about all this and more on today's episode of Crash Course. Well, boys and girls, this year's Monaco Grand Prix had everything from red flags to strategy disasters. We're going to cover it all today, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's slow it down and start from the beginning, shall we? As of just minutes before the start of the race, the rain which we'd all been promised this week finally decided to arrive. And from there, chaos ensued. With the race directors deciding to delay the start to allow the teams to change tyres, make setup adjustments and all that stuff. Before then, finally, after 20 minutes of sitting around, they sent the cars out behind the safety car to do a couple of formation laps. And that's when the rain really, really came down leaving the FIA with no option but to red flag the race before it even begun. Now at this point, it's safe to say we're all having Spa 2021 flashbacks, but thankfully just an hour later than planned, we headed out back on the track again to start this race. However, before the safety car was even able to pull back into the pits and actually get the race under green flag, both Ratifi and Stroll had a little knock in the barrier, resulting in the Williams driver having to replace his front wing and the Aston Martin having a right rear puncher. Yet once the rich Canadians are done messing about, it was finally time to go racing, and Leclerc led the field away in the tricky conditions. From there, things stayed pretty close throughout the field with homeboy Charles Leclerc sitting comfortably up front ahead of Sainz, Perez and Verstappen. That was of course until the track began to dry. Red Bull were the first to make the call as they pulled in Perez from intermediates before Leclerc and Verstappen responded two laps later. Yet due to the rapidly changing conditions out there, those two laps really made a difference as Perez jumped Leclerc on track. Meanwhile though, Sainz stayed out for another three laps and skipped the inters altogether, changing his full wet tyres straight for slicks. And it was at this point that Ferrari made another decision that would send Charles Leclerc's day from bad to work. As after he'd already been jumped by Perez thanks to the Red Bull pit wall moving faster, Ferrari decided to pull Charles in again for dry. Well, they called him in for a couple seconds, then they changed their mind and told him not to come in. But by that point, it was too late. The decision had already been made. Charles was in the pit lane. He was pitting. He then had to wait in the pits behind Sainz as he got his tyres changed first, costing him crucial seconds before getting dry's fitted himself and rejoining the track in four behind Perez, Sainz and Verstappen. And as you can expect, Charles was livid, screaming over the team radio, what are you doing? And you can't help but feel bad for him. Going into this weekend, all everyone was talking about was his Monaco curse and how this year he could finally break that curse and take a win at his home Grand Prix. And up to this point, he had done everything he needed to do to do that. Yet, due to no fault of his own, Ferrari, as they often do at this point, bottled the strategy and in the end, cost him the victory. Ferrari bottling the strategy, as Valtteri Bottas would say, traditions. The race was then stopped not long after thanks to Schumacher's crash, which I'm not going to go too much into, but Jesus, that looks scary with the entire back of his car falling off. Thankfully though, he was okay and once the wreckage was cleared and the barriers were fixed, we were ready to go racing again. The rest of the race after this restart was fairly uneventful. Aside from Alonso holding up half the field for 20 laps as he saved tyres and the final few laps where we saw the four front runners nose to tail trying to find any way past they can but to no avail. As in the end, it was Mexican Sergio Perez that held on to take victory at Monaco. Sainz Verstappen followed him home and Leclerc didn't even end up on the podium come the end of the race. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. This solid result for both Sergio and Red Bull means they now sit 36 points clear on the constructors with Max extending his lead in the drivers to 9 points and Sergio sitting just 6 behind Leclerc. Yet here though is where some issues may begin to arise for Red Bull. Since with Perez now putting himself right into the championship fight it means that he's no longer in the position to simply be Verstappen's wingman, whose role is to just support Max in the championship fight and be there to pick up the pieces where it all goes wrong. Sort of like last season. And already in 2022, we've seen some hints of this team dynamic kicking in. As Perez was asked to move aside for Max in Spain when the Dutchman was coming through the grid, and of course it must be noted that Max was on a different strategy and had fresher tyres, but still, we saw Checo wasn't a fan of the team's decision with his later team radio message post-race. I'm happy for the team, but we need to speak later. And it is worth remembering that even though it might seem like Max is dominant, dominating Perez this season, the results don't tell the whole story. As if he wasn't caught out by a poor time safety car in Jeddah, it's really likely Perez would have won there too which would have had him even closer in the championship battle than he is now. But why would having two quick drivers capable of challenging for the title and wins be a bad thing? Surely Red Bull would rather have two drivers winning races than just one? Well, yeah, it depends. We all know how intense these championship battles can get and how the rivalries on track can spread and affect the dynamic off of it. And this is even more intense when your rival is also your teammate. Think Hamilton and Rosberg and even Vettel and Webber. Red Bull have done this before. And when two drivers in one team are competing for wins and the title, things can get messy. And it can cost the team in the long run, as they risk colliding with one another, costing the entire team points. Going back to the Mercedes example from before, just compare how much easier it was for Lewis to take the championship when he had Bottas in a clear second driver position. And last year, how Verstappen was helped out by Sergio in Abu Dhabi. Having a teammate in your corner really helps. 
especially when you're competing against other teams for the title, just like Red Bull are this year with Ferrari. Now, thanks to a few questionable races from Science so far this year, Ferrari haven't quite got this same issue. Yet, as the season goes on, there is always the risk of Science moving closer in the points and making it a four-horse race, giving Ferrari the same problem that Red Bull might be having now. But that being said, though, even at this point in the season where we're really early on, I don't think many of us are actually considering anyone other than Charles or Verstappen to be winning the title this year, but... You never know, it's F1. And even if it is just for the time being, Perez putting himself in the championship fight may actually hinder Red Bull more than it will help. But yeah, lads, that's it from me today. That is the whole crash course recap of the 2022 Monaco Grand Prix. My predictions for it, well, they didn't go well. I got Leclerc's pole right, but he didn't take the win and Stroll was nowhere near the point, so... That's an L for me. But yeah, overall, as far as Monaco goes, not a bad race, lads. Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of it. And also, what you think about Red Bull's situation they're in right now. Will Perez affect them badly? Will he just drop off after this race? What do you think? But yeah, that's it from me. Until next time, I've been Aiden. This has been Crash Course. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>